Recently, on the 3D Coat Forum, someone had asked about the process or the workflow of taking a model from a CAD application such as Fusion 360, MOI 3D, or Plasticity into 3D Coat for the purposes of texture painting, then exporting it so it can be rendered. I wanted to share it with other viewers who may also be interested in this topic. So let me start with this STL file format that was provided to us. It's probably not the best format to use. As you can see, it's triangulated. And also, if your model consists of many individual components, then it won't come in with all those individual parts separated. They are essentially compiled into one object, if you will. So it's not so easy to hide and unhide the parts that you may not be working on. You can work around that somewhat in 3D Coat. I'll give an example. I'll create a blank layer and let me increase the metalness a little bit. And I'll turn wireframe off by hitting the W key. So let's use the fill tool to quickly fill this part. If this is disconnected where it's not welded together, then 3D Coat will paint just this part when you click the fill tool. As I mentioned, if you want to hide parts, it's not so easy. We do have a hide tool, but it's more of a workaround trying to make up for the fact that you don't have these individual parts. And you'll see what I mean here in just a moment when I import the OBJ version. But yeah, I was able to apply smart materials and 3D Cut will automatically UV map the model when it comes in in STL file format because it typically does not have UVs applied to them. Let's go back to the splash screen, just like we would see it if we were opening the application. Let's try poly modeling instead of just bringing it straight into the paint room. We want to do this so that we can inspect the mesh itself. And there are chances we may have to rotate it, scale it in the viewport, or just clean the mesh up in general. So let's click poly modeling. And what you're seeing here is a UV preview window that I docked inside this right column. You will not see it in the default layout. If you need to use this panel, you can access it from the Windows menu under Panels and access it here. Once it is docked in your UI, it will stay there each time you open 3D Coat unless you change it. And we will look at the UVs in just a moment. But this allows us to work on the UVs while we are editing the mesh. And it's not to be confused with the UV room, at least as of this recording, because the UV workspace is specifically for paint objects. Let's right mouse button click and choose import. I'll choose the OBJ file. 3D code is giving a warning that the mesh is a bit big for this workspace and it could affect performance. In this case, I'll click OK. I'll choose center mass for the gizmo and I can scale it up. I can unhide the grid and the axis handles as well. I can zero it out from the X axis. Y and Z. And I can rotate it here, this rotation widget. Left mouse button, click and hold while I tap a space bar. And then I can enter the value negative 90. All right. And then now I can hit the enter key or the apply button to bring it into the scene. The first thing you'll notice is that all the individual parts that make up the model are now listed here in this panel. This one is just a blank one, so I can delete that. Okay, if I want to inspect some of the individual components, I can quickly isolate a layer by holding down the Alt key and clicking on the visibility icon. With this model, it came in with a number of different UV maps. And what I can do is in this list menu, collapse all of those down to one large UV map. Okay, so let me alt click this visibility icon once more to unhide all the other objects. All right, and let's select one of these options in the UV section of the tool panel so that all the UV tools open up contextually. 
the UV maps are there, but most of them are not unfolded or unwrapped. So I would have to go through and do that one at a time by clicking unwrap. But in this case, I want to simply speed everything up by unifying everything onto one map and then just clicking unwrap or auto map. I'll pick the first UV map and I will choose unify UV. And I can choose delete unused UV sets. Now all I'm seeing is just this one. As I mentioned previously, I could click unwrap because it does have seams, or I could choose to auto map it and have 3D Coat completely clear the seams, create new seams and unfold everything and pack all the islands into this one space. Okay, so we have it auto mapped now. I could spend a bit more time trying to clean up the UVs, but for demonstration purposes, I think this will do just fine. What we want to do now is send a copy of this to the paint workspace through the bake menu. The option we want is retopo to per pixel painting, no baking. We are then presented with a dialog that allows us to choose different options, such as the texture map size. We can set auto smoothing groups. You might also want to choose the normal map preset that fits your specific workflow. And I will go ahead and click OK. So now we are ready. In the paint workspace, we see the new copy of the model. I can turn the wireframe on by hitting the W key. And so we are ready to begin. I'll select layer one, and let's say we wanted to make it look a bit more like this reference image. I will double click on this layer to name it Rough Plastic. I'll speed up the playback while I rinse and repeat this process a few times. You can see the 2D texture editor here. This allows you to paint in 2D space and see live updates on your model in the viewport or vice versa. So if you're painting on the UV map here in the viewport, you'll see it updated in 2D as well. And then you can also view and work on the different map types that are available, such as color, normal or displacement maps, glossiness and metalness. Okay. And then if you have multiple UV maps, you would see them listed here in this drop list menu. You can undock this and scale it if you need. But let's go ahead and open the Smart Materials panel. You have uh, different subfolders by default. Not as many as this because I have accumulated these over time from third-party resources mostly. But also, if you have a license of 3D Coat or Textura 2021 or newer, you have free access to Pilgway's Materials Scan Store. You can sort through the different materials and assets by type or category, download them, then 3D Coat on the next opening of the application will detect it and ask you if you want to install those. So it's super easy to install these. What I would like to do now is select a plastic material from the default subfolder. When you click on one, you'll see it highlighted and then you can start using it right away. If you click a second time, you will see the smart material editor open up here in the upper left hand corner of this thumbnail. You can click it to change the scale. As we make adjustments to the parameters in the Smart Material Editor, we can see the thumbnail reflect those changes on the fly. Another alternative is to open the Smart Material Preview window, which will let us see that material on the model itself. And as long as this preview window is open, then that thumbnail will close. When I collapse it, then the thumbnail will reappear. You can choose the mapping type. We have a video series that covers smart materials in greater depth, so I won't rehash that here. I just wanted to touch on some of the key aspects of this tool set. I'll go ahead and click cancel to close the smart material editor. You can always see it previewed here. Let's proceed now by selecting the semi-gloss plastic layer. 
And with the fill tool, the default option is fill with color. And you want to make sure that the channels you want to paint with are enabled. So if I click the color icon here, you'll see the X indicating it's not active now. So when I paint, it's only going to paint with depth, glossiness, and metalness. I'll enable the color channel once again. I can go ahead and click here to apply the semi-gloss paint. Now for this chuck, it appears it's not as glossy as this. It's a little bit more flat, but not as much as this one. So what I can do is just choose this layer and go ahead and apply the very same texture. I'll hit the W key so we can turn wireframe off. And I can go to the layer panel and adjust the properties here. So the glossiness, I can dial that back. And I think about 65% will do. I'll look through some other subfolders for different materials such as paints. And maybe a plastic. I'm looking for a matte plastic finish that has some rough or bumpy texture to it. For this specific smart material, as with many others, they may require either an ambient occlusion map or a curvature map, which will help indicate, for example, where the edges are on a model. So during the baking process, it uh, creates a map that will give 3D Coat that information. Okay, it has completed the cavity or curvature map. And when we click on the visibility icon, it will allow us to see what that map looks like. And of course, we would want to hide it again after you have examined the curvature map. A typical use case for the cavity or curvature map is where you might have some type of painted metal as an example. And typically, the wear would happen most frequently along the edges of a given object. 3D Coat has conditions-based painting, largely driven by the cavity or ambient occlusion map. These are for regular painting, but you also have these same conditions inside the smart material. Also here where it says degree, you can set the condition and then the value. And on that note, let's stop the video here and we will resume in the next one. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.